There's a force, imperceptible, that permeates all star systems in the known universe. Its subtle presence belies a strength exerted upon humankind. Older than House Carino, resolute beyond the God Emperor's oppressive tyranny, influential to events in the end times or the far distant future. This force operates from the shadows, pulls marionette strings to fulfill hidden machinations, masked by a facade of deference, of subservience. It's shrouded in mysticism, a force inscrutable to the uninitiated, an entity so dizzyingly complex even its members struggle to comprehend its intricacies. It's relentless in pursuit of its mission for humankind. Its name evokes such strong emotions as awe, fear, hatred, resentment. It manipulates without reservation, knowledge is its preserve, power its currency, witchcraft its medium. It's the ancient, enigmatic Bene Gesserit Sisterhood. The Sisterhood claims significance across Frank Herbert's Dune epic, but what exactly is this all-female order? What powers do they possess, and how have they maintained control for millennia while propagating their designs? To understand the Bene Gesserit, we must plumb their ancient history and inner workings for hidden knowledge. But before we begin, a spoiler warning for events that unfold in the Dune series, including topics that discuss sequel and prequel novels. Alright, let's dive in. Founded eons ago, in the centuries surrounding the tumultuous war against thinking machines in Butlerian Jihad, the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood is a clandestine female order of acolytes, advisors, and ambassadors, whose purpose is humankind's preservation and continued survival in the harsh, unrelenting wilds of space. Witness to atrocity wrought by technological dependence, but aware of the dangers of ignorance, the Bene Gesserit Order was established on principles of enlightened guidance. This mission, a shepherd for mankind, is simple to state, yet the subtle nuances, persuasion, and merciless action required to effectuate are terribly complex, difficult to realize. The Bene Gesserit are known for meticulous preparation and profound foresight. Their plans span centuries and rely on generations to materialize, as is heard in the statement of purpose taken from Rosak archives. One cannot understand humanity without taking a sufficiently long view. We are in an excellent position to achieve this. Such is the delicate influence necessary to steer humanity on a path of safety thin as a knife's edge with oblivion waiting on either side. To enact their purpose, the Bene Gesserit have developed several tools over the millennia and refined skills in manipulation, suggestion, mental and physical conditioning to the point of complete bodily mastery. Mythos of the Bene Gesserit holds that their ancestors rose to dominance on the planet Rosak in the ancient time of thinking machines. The toxic, mutating environment of Rosak transformed the genomes of human settlers and a subset of females developed supernatural telekinetic abilities. Their powers marked them as sorceresses and brought them control. The sorceress's primary goal was to document their genetic stock and expand their influence through careful breeding programs, ensuring that mutant traits would continue. This sentiment acts as a foundational belief for the Bene Gesserit's own genetic manipulation in the coming millennia. When an epidemic released by thinking machines spread virulently across Rosak, the sorceresses developed a peculiar innate immune response. They learned that they could voluntarily control their body's internal body chemistry and render the virus inert. Such control is again an echo that will reverberate throughout the future of the Bene Gesserit. Under the leadership of Raquel Alberto Anirú, and in the aftermath of humanity's victory over thinking machines, the sorceresses transferred their base of power to the planet Wallach 9. Here the founding mother school was established, Rosak's genetic breeding program was reformed, and the sorceresses adopted the new title of Sisterhood of the Bene Gesserit Order. To safeguard humanity and execute their purpose, the Bene Gesserit manipulate the empire on two fronts, genealogy and sociology. The order works with great industry to control humankind's genetic stock, preserving only the hardiest and necessary traits through their carefully crafted breeding program. They believe through artificial selection the human species will ascend to new heights, culminating in the birth of their supposed chosen one, the Kwisatz Haderach, the one who can be all places at once. A male gifted with the powers of a reverend mother and granted access to all of humankind's past memory. For thousands of years, they pursued the creation of such a being with singular focus. The sisterhood sifts like sand the human genome, discarding weaker, unwanted traits and seeking only that which is vital to their current designs. They look for strength of character, attractiveness, loyalty, birth unwitting pawns and knowing servants of their cause. 
The breeding program is whispered in hushed tones from rival factions within the Imperium, but hardly is it common knowledge. Most individuals are in fact oblivious participants, seduced by a duplicitous sister, and manipulated with ease to propagate their bloodline. Indeed, many Bene Gesserit are deployed as breeding sisters under false pretenses of advisors to houses major and minor, where they then infiltrate and fulfill their intended purpose. Beyond mere genetics, the Bene Gesserit order works to further its own power through political, economic, and most significantly religious means. No aspect of humanity is safe from their devious predations. No idea is beyond their twisting. Sisters are sent to integrate with political factions of great import, to spy and report, and to slowly mold house actions to their will. This we hear from an early mother superior, Valya Harkonnen. We must place more truthsayers and sister mentats in the noble houses of the Landsrad League, make ourselves indispensable to the Imperium. Not only will this generate revenue for us, it will also make us vital to very influential people. But that's only a stepping stone. We have much greater plans in store. Sisters spread throughout great avenues of trade and space lanes to gather influence, to strike deals with other factions like the Mentat Order and the Bene Tilax, that through subterfuge, blackmail, or other means, tip the scales in the Bene Gesserit's favor. Through such, they maintain a hidden authority with unrestricted access to even the imperial court, where they whisper sweet lies in the ears of emperors. Perhaps the most insidious tool available is used as both sword and shield by the order, religion. Sisters disseminate propaganda, establish cults of worship, and proselytize the masses into a seething army of zealous violence unleashed upon enemies at their discretion. Faith also provides protection behind a bastion of infallible holiness. Bene Gesserit allow misconceptions to circulate that feed their religious authority as sublime spiritual leaders that none dare move against. Though the order itself has no internally stated religion, it exploits all and sees in them deeply ingrained cultural concepts malleable through the Missionaria Protectiva. The Protectiva is a propaganda machine developed eons ago and seeded within the bedrock of colonized or conquered worlds to guide belief systems. The Protectiva cultivates an aura of awe and mysticism around the Bene Gesserit, creates intentionally vague prophetic notions that can at any time be utilized by a traveling sister to twist the planet's devoted subservience to the Order's whim. No place was this better illustrated than on Arrakis, where the Lady Jessica realized subtle signs of the Protectiva woven into Fremen society and stoked them into a fury to vault her son Polytrates to messianic heights. Central to the Protectiva is a collection of mystic ideas known as the Panoplia Prophetica. This excerpt from the open-eyed proof highlights the devious ways to bend hearts. If you believe certain words, you believe their hidden arguments. When you believe something is right or wrong, true or false, you believe the assumptions in the words which express the arguments. Such assumptions are often full of holes, but remain most precious to the convinced. The Panoplia Prophetica ingrains thought of salvation through a chosen one, a religious prophet from beyond who brings with them paradise. Though most quickly absorbed by destitute backwater planets, even well-established civilizations have over thousands of years been influenced to view the sisters' work as deeply religious. With their manipulation of religion, the sisterhood indirectly commands entire star systems of subjects indoctrinated to blind obedience. The art of twisting faith and opening footholds for Jesuit dominance elicits great consternation amongst factions to whom they are opposed. Groups and guilds view the sisterhood as an overreaching clandestine coven of witches intent on utter subjugation. They whisper curses through gritted teeth, see in sister abilities the signs of occult magic, and attempt to unveil the order's deceit but are unable to pierce heavy shrouds of secrecy. But what fills the faithful with righteousness and the reprehensible with fear? What are the true powers of the sisterhood once mystery is banished? The Bene Gesserit are called witches for a reason. They command superb mental and physical control. They have ascended beyond humanity, have become something else entirely. Though experience, natural inclinations, and station bestow abilities unique to each sister, there are skills shared by all initiated learned through decades of rigorous conditioning, or passed down through breeding. First is the inimitable talent in observation. Trained eyes of a sister can read micro-expressions, draw meaning from body language, and trained ears listen to the changes in vocal tone that culminate in sharp insight to such a degree that lay people believe them thought readers. 
Invaluable in diplomacy and espionage, this skill is also used during famed Bene Gesserit truth-sayer trances to judge falsehoods. Next comes the sister's immense physical prowess, control and discipline ingrained through the Pranabindu arts. The ancient way of Pranabindu is a way of body awareness that allows sisters to consciously manage heart rate, blood flow and pressure, body temperature, and internal organ function. They have precise command of every muscle fiber and nerve ending in their entire body. A Bene Gesserit can analyze the molecular composition of compounds through smell or taste, as well as alter their own internal chemical balance. Remnants of that survival trait carried from the ancient sorceresses of Rosak. Toxins are rendered inert through will alone. Hormone levels and genetic markers change even to produce the desired sex in their offspring. Chemical balance is integral in the Reverend Mother Rite of Passage, in which a sister must mitigate an ingested toxin or succumb to its effects and die. Such physical mastery transforms every Bene Gesserit into a lethal, calculated killer. With reflexes that confound, strikes aimed at vulnerable nerve and body segments, and lithe muscles whose force crushes bone, sisters are deadly with and without weapons. Their martial arts, known colloquially to the Fremen of Arrakis as weirding ways, have been distilled over centuries into the most superior hand-to-hand -hand abilities, rivaled only by the aforementioned desert warriors and House Carino's imperial Sardaukar. Deft physicality is married to superhuman mental acumen, solidifying Bene Gesserit as superior beings. Extreme cognitive discipline affords full control of mental perception. Sisters can relax at a whim to call forth states of hyper-awareness. Their minds hypothesize at levels comparable to those of the human supercomputers within the Mentat schools. Greatest of all is a Bene Gesserit Reverend Mother's access to other memories and past lives. They possess the combined wisdom of all their female ancestry, memory that's unlocked during the agonizing trauma of their rite of passage, as well as those transferred to them from other Reverend Mothers. Such knowledge projects an aura of infallible genius, a type of mental depth akin to cognitive immortality. They rely on past mistakes to avoid the future's pitfalls. The other memories are limited by genealogy, and no reverend mother can experience past lives of their male ancestry, a shortcoming rectified by the Kwisatz Haderach, who can peer into both sides of human history. The most disarming of Bene Gesserit abilities is the use of voice to compel all within earshot. Voice is a type of audio neuronal control technique developed and refined by the sisterhood over several centuries. It's a well-guarded secret, and few outside the order understand its workings completely. After observing an individual's response to audition and own inflection, a sister can utilize precise intonations and vocalizations to achieve complete control over them. With use of voice, simple commands are dutifully executed, even against the victim's wishes. Beyond mere command, Voice is often utilized to extract information from the unwilling. To the uninitiated, this skill indeed seems like sorcery. All sisters are skilled, but there exists a strict hierarchy within the order to promote discipline and maintain the trajectory of their overall purpose, a purpose that could easily be mismanaged over millennia. As stated in Heretics of Dune, there was an organizational rubric laid down by the original Bene Gesserit chapter house. Divisions were cut by hard vertical and horizontal barriers, divided into isolated groups that converged to a single command, only at the top. At the pinnacle of power sits the Reverend Mother Superior, to whom all of the order must answer. Though she listens to advice of select counsel, once deliberation finishes, her decisions are ultimate, her will final. Orders are carried with unquestioned loyalty, or at least not open opposition. The sisterhood adamantly upholds a facade of union, but internal rebellions emerge over great issues on occasion. The position of Mother Superior is passed to a chosen successor, and at the time of death, she imparts her persona, her other memories and past lives to her chosen, existing eternally in their mind. Beneath Mother Superior stand the sisterhood's reverend mothers, sharp, tactful, wrapped in mystique, and cloaked in the customary black abba dress, these women assume vital positions as advisors to great houses, geneticists responsible for the breeding program, diplomats, intermediaries, historians, faculty, and archivists for the Bene Gesserit chapter houses. A reverend mother is the ultimate authority to those both within and without the sisterhood. Supreme Bashar Miles Tagg describes reverend mothers as such. 
It often was said, with truth, that Reverend Mothers no longer were completely members of the human race. They moved somehow outside the main flow, perhaps parallel to it, perhaps diving into it occasionally for their own purposes, but always removed from humankind. Manipulation, that was their mark. They manipulated everyone and everything. To join the ranks, a sister must undergo the terrible spice agony trial and survive. This deadly ritual involves imbibing the distilled spice essence and illuminating poison known as the water of life, then using their skill in body chemistry, render it inert before it consumes them. If successful, this reaction unlocks the genetic memories of her past lives and endows an immense accumulation of wisdom that is characteristic of a reverend mother. Only those deemed prepared by a chapter house proctor can undergo the trial and even then many die in the process. Those who emerge intact are granted the title of Reverend Mother. Armed with arcane knowledge, possessed of otherworldly calm and poise, they are feared and obeyed by all. Noteworthy positions include the true sayers renowned across the Imperium for harsh scrutiny and arbitration of disputes. All lies wither under their watchful gaze. Proctors that guide the grueling education within the Order's chapter houses, and breeding mothers trained in sensual arts. Beneath the Reverend Mother's auspices scurry sisters, acolytes, initiates, and servants who perform most of the Order's civic duties. Prospective sisters are brought in as initiates, carefully bred in advance for their role, where they are then subjected to decades of rigorous mental and physical training. Like the great pressure that renders lead stronger than steel, the Order is ruthless in their distinction. Most prospects fail and are denied by the sisterhood. A famous trial is that of the poisoned Gom Jabbar, in which an individual is subjected to excruciating pain and forced into a profoundly human decision. Awareness is tested against instinct, and in such trials the true making of a sister is displayed. The Reverend Mother Gaius Helene Moheim elaborates to Paul Atreides on the use of the test. Ever sift sand through a screen? We Bene Gesserit sift people to find the humans. I observed you in pain. Our test is crisis and observation. A test to determine if the human mind can override animal instinct. Initiates progress to acolytes and in time fully vested sisters. Men are used by the Bene Gesserit in labor, security, servile and military capacities, but never can they understand the sisterhood's designs. The Bene Gesserit project an image of complete control of understanding that reaches the very recesses of human knowledge. Their legend and their skill carve out an unassailable bastion that protects the Order from most threats. But there are two weaknesses they possess, two enemies with whom war is constantly waged. The first is dependency on the spice melange of Arrakis. Great creator, great destroyer. Without the spice, the Bene Gesserit wouldn't exist, but it's a substance to which they are hopelessly enslaved. Spice is vital in inducing truth sayer truth trance, to visiting the other memories of past lives, and most critical is spice essence in the ritual christening of reverend mothers through their spice agony trial. Without it, no new mothers would be born, and the culmination of human ancestral knowledge would forever be locked within genes, beyond recollection or understanding. Dependence on spice forces Bene Gesserit to enter treaties and agreements with those in control. It nearly destroyed the Order entirely under the tyranny of God Emperor Leto II Atreides as he hoarded and largely withheld the substance from all for over 3,000 years. The second danger, invisible and intangible, runs deep in the very nature of the human species. Emotion, especially those strong emotions of fear, love, and hate. Emotion represents loss of control, higher thinking and consciousness. To the Bene Gesserit, all emotions are a weakness to be excoriated within and exploited without. To them, emotion represents primitive drives no longer valuable for humanity. Sisters are bred and trained to remain detached, cold and unfeeling, thus destroying in them any notions of empathy. The primitive fear response so deeply enmeshed in humanity is an emotion not even the Bene Gesserit can escape. It's their ancient nemesis, enemy of order, logic and reason. They arm themselves against the insidious foe with mnemonics, concentration and breath tricks to quell bursts of anxiety. Greatest of these is the litany against fear, memorized early in a novice's training, uttered silently to calm nerves and clear vision. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. 
But other emotions greater than fear are not so easily repressed. Hatred and love. They're the strongest emotions, hold the deepest reservoirs and firmest grip on the mind. They are to be silenced at all cost. They can betray centuries of planning in a moment, destroy billions and unleash devastation. The Reverend Mother, Darwe Odrati, recalls that problems arose from the fact that the foster mother gave Odrati that thing which most mothers give their children, that thing which the sisterhood so distrusted, love. A notable example occurs when Lady Jessica falls in love with Duke Leto Atreides and produces for him the son he desires, rather than the daughter demanded by the sisterhood's breeding program. This led to an early birth of the Kwisatz Haderach and plunged the empire into chaos during the lifetimes of Paul Muad'Dib and his son Leto. Less abstract enemies also strike at Bene Gesserit, attempting to find chinks in their unassailable armor. Rival factions, such as the bioengineers of the Bene Tulilex, covet the Sisterhood's breeding program. They tried to expose genetic records held by Jesuit Chapter House and integrate them with the Tleolaxu's own significant evolutionary programs to further ambitions. The tinkerers and artificers of distant Ix hold in contempt the Jesuit as sisters often move to thwart technological advancements, seeing in Ixian devices the lingering threat of ancient thinking machines. But the deadliest faction ever faced by the Order arrives in the far distant future and under the guise of their own descendants. During the great scattering that followed the death of God Emperor Leto II, humanity exploded in an era of exploration and opportunity. Bene Gesserit sisters numbered among the expeditionary settlers that ventured beyond known space. Hundreds of years later, these so-called lost ones returned to imperial space, but centuries of divergent evolution turned them into something else entirely. The sisters that returned were no longer Bene Gesserit. They had developed their own sect, their own ways. They called themselves the Honored Matries, and new ideologies put them at odds with their ancestral order. The Matries embraced emotion, pleasure, pain, debauchery. They enslaved, through sexual exploits and shows of dominance, many worlds during their return from the scattering. This licentious behavior and open degradation earns the Matries only derision from the sisterhood, who resorts to describing them merely as whores. The honored Matries and Bene Gesserit sisterhood declared war against one another that lasted several years. The conflict proved the might of the honored Matries, and the Bene Gesserit realized that long-term survival of their order could only be achieved by uniting the two factions. The sisterhood was finally relieved when Gesserit leadership and Matries leadership merged into a single commanding position. A new Bene Gesserit order was established, and though its purpose is little changed, the methods in which achievement is claimed have altered significantly. The new order works in a fervor to regain lost strength and re-establish itself within a rapidly changing imperium. The Bene Gesserit Sisterhood, an ancient order obscured by religious myth, by ritual sorcery and witchcraft, has for millennia manipulated human events and evolution with the self-proclaimed intention of creating a greater, more resilient species adaptable to the threats of a hostile galaxy. Their enemies contend that the Order wishes only to grab more power, assume greater control. The Sisterhood is devious and merciless in its machinations, armed with great resources to realize their goal. They are a significant force across the Imperium, and one with whom few can compete. Their mysteries are their own, vast troves of arcana secured behind impenetrable vaults in the darkest abyss of the Black Abba Robe. Thanks so much for watching and listening to this video on the Bene Gesserit Order. Now I want to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts on the Missionaria Protectiva, the breeding program, as well as suggestions for future videos in the comments below. And if you're a fan of lore and storytelling, be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out the podcast, where content is uploaded frequently. I want to thank my amazing supporters over on Patreon who make all of this possible, and I couldn't do it without their fantastic support. If you'd like to become a lore luminary for access to me, a great community, written scripts, and early video drops, head to patreon.com slash the lorebrarians to learn more. Until next time, go forth and explore the lore.